What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another Borderlands Top 10 video and this time we're taking a look at the 10 best base game weapons in Borderlands 3. Since not everybody owns all the DLCs, this list will detail the very best weapons you can get just by owning the base game. If you guys enjoy these types of videos, please take a second to tap that subscribe button for more. With that, let's get started. And number 10 is... Getting us started at number 10 on this list is the Becca. This Jacob's AR is one of my favorite guns in the game. I love the look, the feel, the power. The only thing that I dislike is that you can only get one per character. You can't even get a new one by going into true vault under mode, sadly. It also doesn't spawn on the diamond loot room wall. So if you're wanting a perfect parts version, you're going to have to complete the hammerlock hunts on multiple characters. That said, a perfect parts version is not at all necessary for this gun. Even if you get the worst possible parts version, you're still going to to shred with this thing. Luckily, the anointment reroll machine eliminates having to worry about getting a perfect anointment roll because that used to be another huge obstacle in keeping you from getting a perfect version of this thing. The Becca is absolutely lethal in the hands of Flak, but all four Vault Hunters can use it to amazing effect. Number nine. Better be good. At number nine is the Sandhawk. Now this is one of the strongest sniper rifles in the game. This gun is a lot like the SMG version from Borderlands 2. You got slow moving V pattern projectiles that deal crazy damage. This gun remains very strong and viable for all the Vault Hunters despite suffering a slight nerf back on June 11th of 2020. The only downside right now for this gun is that it consumes ammo like crazy and you can't get a whole lot of sniper rifle SDUs. But with a bottomless mags Mo's build or a cut purse artifact on all the vault hunters, you can use this thing very consistently. On Zane, in the hands of the clone, this gun is god tier. The Sandhog drops from Katagawa Jr. on the Atlas HQ map on Promethea when you are playing on Mayhem 6 and higher. It can also be obtained from the Diamond Loot Room or from Anathema and Scourge in the Guardian Takedown. Don't hate, it's number 8! Landing up on this list after previously finding itself on my worst legendary items list in Borderlands 3 as the worst SMG in the game previously is the DNA. Well, a buff on January 14th, 2021 has skyrocketed this SMG to be one of the best all around SMGs in the game. This Malawan shoots two orbs that diverge in opposite directions and link together with an elemental beam. Each shot will be a different element of either cryo shock and or corrosive, but no matter which element hits, this thing seems to just shred enemies since this gun also does splash damage. This gun will be outpaced by the flipper and the plasma coil in my opinion, but those are DLC items and this is a non-DLC list, so the DNA is absolutely worth trying out for yourself. This gun drops from General Trot on the Necro Tefeo map Desolation's Edge when you play on Mayhem 6 and above, or you can get it from Scourge or Anathema in the Guardian Takedown, but I would highly recommend farming General Tron for a faster method of obtaining this. Right, let's see number seven! Sliding in number seven on this list is the Butcher. This gun returns from previous Borderlands games and possibly its best state yet. The gun's special ability is that it has a high chance to refill the magazine with a random number of bullets while shooting it. This gun at launch was one of the strongest weapons in the game. Highly coveted on every single Vault Hunter, but it was notoriously strong in the hands of Moe's. It was so strong in fact, the Gearbox decided to dial it back with a 25% damage nerf and an accuracy reduction. Sadly, both of those led to this gun completely falling off of everybody's radar. Luckily, Gearbox fixed this problem with an 83.3% weapon damage buff and an increase in the chance to refill the mag while shooting with a hotfix on June 10th, 2021. This has made this gun actually stronger than it was at launch, which is quite the turnaround. It can spawn in any element or be non-elemental, and you can roll it in a times three or a times six version with the times six being more damage per shot but at the cost of two ammo per shot you can most easily obtain this gun by collecting lutograms from dinklebot on skywell 27 and then turning those into crazy earl on sanctuary where you have a 25 percent chance for him to give you a butcher you can also obtain this gun as a world drop or from its dedicated source of titan the final boss of the slaughter shaft this is how many times this gun can make me happy it's number six. At number six is the multi-tap. There aren't many legendary Atlas weapons in Borderlands 3. No, that's that's the whole sentence. You thought there was gonna be something else after that, but that was it. But the multi-tap stands out to me as one of the better all-around pistols in the game. High fire rate and damage. When you reload it, you fire a cryo rocket that will home in on tracked enemies. And when you hit enemies with a tracker, every bullet will split and hit each marked enemy. On my Atlas Allegiance Zane playthrough, I used this gun to kill Hemavorus while using an anointment that gave me ammo regen. No damage boost 
anointments whatsoever, and it was pretty easy. The multi-tap did receive a huge 175% weapon damage buff on April 29th, 2021, turning this gun into one of the best all-around weapons in the game. It will always be non-elemental, and it can drop from Katagawa Ball on Mayhem 6 and above, or it can also drop from Scourge and Anathema in the Guardian Takedown. Coming in at number five is the crit. This is the only non-legendary item on this list, but it's deserving of its spot on the list. This is a returning weapon from Borderlands 2 that's actually even better than the original. This gun has 8% lifesteal while shooting enemies with no downtime on the healing. The only downside to this gun is that you have a 5% chance to drop it when you reload. Now this can be fully mitigated on Moe's with her ammo regen skills or on Zane by getting one with ammo regen while clone is active. That said, dropping it is rare and most of the time when you drop it, you can just pick it right back up and get back to shooting. In addition to its healing abilities, this gun is also one of the strongest SMGs in the entire game. This is due in no small part to the 540% weapon damage buff it received on February 11th of 2021. That same buff also increased lifesteal from 5% to 8% and lower the chance to drop it from 12.5% down to 5%. This gun will always be shock elemental only and can roll with the binary prefix which gives you more damage per shot at the cost of one extra ammo. The crit can be obtained by tipping Moxie in Sanctuary 3 and there is no limit to how many you can get by tipping her. This allows you to obtain one with the binary prefix and a good anointment fairly easily. Moxie can also give you the hail from tipping and while the hail is very good it's just nowhere near the crit for damage. This gun is a great easy to obtain weapon for when you first start your journey into mayhem levels. Moving on to number four. Coming in at number four is the Backburner, one of the overall highest DPS weapons in the game. The Backburner is also my least favorite weapon type, a rocket launcher. However, I recognize the power of this weapon and it is exceptional in the hands of any of the Vault Hunters. Basically, you shoot this into a crowd of enemies and it does all the work for you. This launcher is also available in every single element, making it a great choice for nearly any situation. In the hands of Zane with a clone, the clone can absolutely shred with this thing as long as you're wearing a transformer shield, because that will allow the clone to just keep shooting it nonstop without killing himself with the splash damage. Same goes for all the Vault Hunters. Put this thing on, wear a transformer shield, and just shoot it forever. Also, farming this thing and actually earning one for yourself is very satisfying since this weapon only drops from the Agonizer 9000 when playing on Mayhem 6 above or from scourge and anathema oh and did i mention that the drop rate for this gun is just about seven percent so if you're looking for a rare item worth the farm this is it and now we're down to number three jumping into the list way up here number three is the needle gun this gun's special ability is that continuous fire will increase the fire rate and the needles that you shoot will debuff enemies this stacks up to 10 times and the mag will refill each time you apply the 10th stack to an enemy the needle gun received a huge 200 percent weapon damage buff back on june 24th of 2021 bumping it from laughing stock to one of the most coveted smgs you can get now one of the big knocks on this gun had been that you could only obtain it during the cartels event which only came around once per year, but Gearbox recently made the Cartels, Bloody Harvest, and Broken Hearts events all permanent and all free to everybody who owns the game, making this the absolute best base game SMG. Uh, this one almost made it to number one, but it didn't, so it's number two. Coming in strong at number two is one of my favorite weapons in Borderlands 3, the Hellwalker. This Jacob's shotgun is locked to fire damage, and it doesn't seem to care about that. Shooting in the shape of a pentagram and featuring one shot then reload traditional Jacob style, one wouldn't expect that to lend itself to such insane damage. But a buff on September 3rd, 2020 boosted the weapon damage by 317%, launching this gun into everyone's must-have list. Like I mentioned previously, despite this gun being locked in incendiary damage, it just obliterates everything. And it's one of the most satisfying weapons I've ever used on any video game ever period. Running up to an enemy and popping their head with one shot, reloading, spinning around, and destroying another enemy, it just feels like the super shotgun from Doom. You can farm this one from Road Dog on the Pandora map, the Splinterlands, or you can even get this thing as a random world drop. Honorable for my honorable mentions, I want to point out that literally any of these weapons I'm about to mention could just as easily make this list with the right build. The Hellshock, Chaos and Trevenator, Reflux, Rowan's Illusions Call, Kings and Queens Call, Plague Bearer, Maggie, Fearmonger, Magnificent, OPQ System, Grease Trap, Hive, Laser Exploder, Hail, Lob, Krakatoa, Lyuta, Smog, Boomsicle, Tigs Boom, Redline, Tsunami, Sleeping Giant, Breath of the Dying, amongst many, many other powerful base game weapons. And finally, here we are at number one! 
finally at number one, the Monarch, and anybody that's ever used this gun knows why. Switching this thing into bipod mode will cause you to be unable to jump or sprint, but in doing so, you become the god of death. Featuring a high fire rate and nice bullet spread, the Monarch is essentially an assault rifle shotgun, and you should use it exactly like that. Get right up in enemies' faces and just unleash absolute destruction. This AR can spawn in a times four or a times eight version, and honestly, the times four is what you want to go with because the times eight will leave you reloading a bit too often, in my opinion. Mo's with enough mag size bonuses could potentially shoot the times eight forever, though, so keep that in mind. This gun remains one of the most used, most coveted and most enjoyable weapons in Borderlands 3. To farm one for yourself, go do the Kill Kilovolt quest for Moxie and Lectra City on Promethea, and then farm Kilovolt, who has a 16.5% chance to drop this bad boy. I hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 list of the best base game weapons in Borderlands 3. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe for more, and be sure to let me know in the comment section below what is your favorite base game weapon. Thank you guys for watching. Take care.